Welcome to your eLearnTronics Electronics Learning Board soldering tutorial video for the capacitance board. In this video, we're going to go through all of the steps to stuff your capacitance board and end up with something that not only looks great, but also will teach you a little bit something about electronics. When you're done soldering it up, come on back and watch the explainer video, and we're gonna teach you a little something about capacitance. So if you're ready, let's get soldering. Okay, here we have our capacitance learning board. Yours may be in a different package than this one. This is one of our earlier packagings. So you can see all of the components that you have in there. Let's dump this out and see what we have. We'll get rid of the bag because we don't need that anymore. And let's see what we have in here. For starters, we have our 9 volt to barrel jack connector. We have a 1000 microfarad capacitor. We got here a 470 microfarad capacitor. And the smallest one is a 100 microfarad capacitor. Next, we have here a dip switch. It's probably red. It might not be. It's going to have three nice uh, little buttons that you can flip on and off. You're going to have a 5 millimeter LED. Let's see, what else do we have here? Our barrel jack connector. This is what will sit on the board that will plug into our 9 volt battery. Uh, you're going to have a... Oh, can I pick it up? So we have a 470 ohm resistor, our tack switch, or our push button. Then we're going to have four M3 screws and four hex standoffs. And we'll set those aside because we really don't need them until later. Uh, that's just what holds up our board. And speaking of which, we have our circuit board. It should be white with black text. Pretty instructional. And if I do say so myself, it's pretty pretty. You're going to need a soldering iron. It doesn't have to be a fancy one. Any old soldering iron will do. You need some solder. I've got this fancy roller, but you don't need that. You need a clean work surface preferably one that's heat proof and we're going to start off uh, by figuring out which of our components sits most flush on the board. If you've seen some of the other soldering videos you know this technique but we're still going to go through it. We want uh, whichever component is going to sit most flush. In this case it's the resistor and it's marked here on the board 470 ohm or 470R so we'll just slide it on through there and go ahead and solder it up. We're diving right in. We're gonna go ahead and tin our tip. Now you want to be in a well-ventilated area or ideally have a fume extractor because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. So we're just gonna tack down one point to make sure that it's sitting flush on the board. Uh, this one looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna do the other point and I think we're off to a good start. Make sure that I have a good joint there, good couple of joints rather. Uh, this one could be a little bit better, so I'll go ahead and touch it up. And when you're happy with it, go ahead and grab your flush cutters and trim off the leads. Uh, you should, I don't do what I'm doing here. You should hold on to the leads while you clip them, otherwise they can go flying and get into places like eyeballs and other sensitive areas. Okay, our next component, uh, it's it's looking like our probably our tack switch. Let's see, tack switch compared with dip switch, it's hard to see here, but the winner is in fact going to be the tack switch, just barely. So that's going to go right here. Uh, it can be a little tricky to get these pins in, so you may have to kind of finesse it you may have to bend the pins a little bit. They're pretty flexible. And uh, the nice thing about these is once you get them into the through holes, uh, it's really designed to hold in place. So it's not going to go falling out on you, but it can be a little bit of a pain to get it in initially. Yep, here's uh, this one is just not quite there. If you have a little, you know, plastic point like I have here, it could be helpful. Tweezers. Uh, are also very helpful here. Take your time. It's not a rush. Alright, this one's really giving me some trouble. <laughs> uh, 
Let me get a closer look here. Oh boy. Man, this just does not want to go in. Well, hopefully this will be the most challenging part. Hopefully your button, your tax switch is already on your board. This one is causing me a lot of trouble. I'm, you know, yeah, I'll just use the, I'm going to use my work surface to put some pressure on it. And there we go. That is, that is about as flush as you can get for a tax switch. Now, the nice thing about this is the shape of the pins really keep it from falling out. So you, you don't have to, you don't have to hold it in. It's, it's pretty much there. Ah, uh, you know, I can get this a little bit better. This is my example board, so I want it to be perfect. All right, that's going to be good enough. So we're just going to solder down our first point here. And since uh, the pins are made to hold this thing in place, I'm not checking to make sure it's flush. Usually I'd tack down one pin and then hold up the board, make sure it's flush. Uh, you'll see how that works later when we get to the capacitors, I'm sure. All right, uh, check my solder joints. This one, it's not quite, not quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think those will work. Okay, so now we've got our first two components in. Now, is it the LED or the dip switch? Well, that looks like the dip switch to me. So we're gonna put this, populate it in the board. Uh, we want the the on side to be pointing up towards towards the capacitors see in this direction and we'll flip this over now in this case I'm just gonna do one pin and then I'm just gonna hold up the board and I wanna see how flush it is and it's not quite perfectly flush or at least not to my standards uh, and if that happens then you can use one finger on the component and then just touch the solder joint to melt the solder to reflow the solder and then you can push in the component and it's sitting flush I'm just gonna jump through the other the other five pins here and get this dip switch soldered in place it's pretty quick once you get used to that technique uh, for making your components flush, uh, you end up going pretty quickly with it. And again, we always want to check our joints to make sure that we're happy with them. You can go back later and touch them up, but since we're, we have our soldering iron, we have everything out, we're just going to do this now. All right, so next we've got, well, it's either going to be our barrel jet connector or the LED could be no this capacitor is way too big so it's going to be our LED now LEDs are polar components what that means is that it matters which way we put this on the board like with our tax switch it didn't matter which way we put it in uh, with the LED it does matter now the best way to figure out the correct way to position this in the board is to find the flat side of the LED and it's, it's pretty easy to see, but then if you look at the silk screen, there's a flat side on the silk screen. So you're gonna match up, obviously, the flat side from the LED with the flat side from the silk screen. So we'll just stick that in there. If I could put it in the proper way. So, yep, here we go. So we've got it populated correctly. Now you want to make sure you get this right. It is a pain to desolder, remove the LED, and then you know clear up the through holes. So I'm going to tack down one point, and well, that is that is very flush. I'm impressed. Usually when I do LEDs, they are just all over the place. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to use my flush cutters to trim these up. If you don't have a pair, I highly recommend them. They're like four bucks on Amazon. Definitely worth the investment. I would buy a dozen of them. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, our next component is going to either be the 100 microfarad capacitor or the barrel jack. It's kind of a wash. So I'm going to go with the barrel jack, because why not? So we're going to stick that into our barrel jack holes, and we're going to solder this. Now this is going to take a lot of solder, which means that it will require a lot of heat. These are large holes, uh, and we have slotted pins. So we're just going to kind of hold the soldering iron there, and just flood it with solder until the entire through hole fills it up. Now be careful, because this is holding a lot of heat. It's very easy to burn yourself on this. So I'm just going to clean this up. With the barrel jack connector, you want it to be flush on the board, but also straight, because it has a little, bit of, a little bit of wiggle room. If you don't want it to be perfect, if you don't care, then just get it soldered. But if you want it to be pretty, like I do, you want to check that. So once you're happy with the alignment, go ahead and solder the other two pins. Again, you're just going to hold it there for a little bit, get the heat going, uh, you don't want to go too long because it is possible to actually melt the plastic in the housing. Um, so we're just going to let that cool. Again, this stuff, it gets just crazy hot. So we've got a little bit of, that's, that's the flux, that's the rosin that burns. It doesn't really bother me. If it bothers you, you can use some isopropyl alcohol and like a cotton swab to clean it up. I don't much care about it, but... Like I said, if it bothers you, have at it. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our capacitors, and again, these are polar. So we need to be very careful about which direction we put them in. The easiest way to do this is to find the negative side, which is the white stripe, and that is going to go towards the darker side on the silk screen. So does that make sense? We're going to uh, have the, the negative side of the capacitors pointed towards the barrel jack. Okay, and what's really happening is we have power going from the barrel jack connector to the dip switches, and then those are then running up to, based on which switch is turned on, they're going to the various capacitors to complete that part of the circuit. And the negative side the dark side on the silk screen then goes to the negative portion of the battery, thus completing the circuit and allowing the capacitors to charge up. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to clean up my tip and tin it and we'll just tack down one point and one point only. These capacitors are not going to sit super flush. So we're going to tack down that one point, put our finger on the other end, reflow that solder and just push it flush until we're happy. Now I will caution you, you don't want to put too much heat into these capacitors. Technically, you can cause damage to them if they overheat. If you're quick about it, you're not going to have an issue, but just something to be aware of. Don't just sit there with your soldering iron on the capacitor. So now we'll go to our 470 microfarad capacitor. That's going to go in the middle. Again, we want the negative side pointed in the same direction as our 100 microfarad capacitor. You know the drill now. We're going to tack down one point. Let it set. See how we like it. I'm not. Uh, it's close. I I'm being a bit of a perfectionist here, but I want it to look pretty. Right, and this can be a little wobbly. This is much easier on a, a heat proof uh, soldering surface versus say, trying to use helping hands up in the air. I'm not a huge fan of helping hands. Okay, so we have that in and now we're gonna do our final, the behemoth, the thousand microfarad capacitor. I love these things. Do I even need to say it? Tack down one point. This thing is definitely going to be off. <laughs> wow. That, that's, that is just awful. All right, so we'll reflow and see we can just push it through from the other side. And then we'll rock it a little bit. Uh, I think that looks good. Tack down point number two. 
I'm going to give it a little more solder here. And yeah, I got a little too much there. Uh, clean up my tip. So I'm actually turning off my soldering iron now because we're done with the soldering. Uh, you want to tin your tip before you before you put it away. And now I'm going to trim off the leads. Don't do what I'm doing here. Hold the leads as you trim them. Otherwise, they can just go flying. And you don't want this little piece of metal in your eye. It's very simple. Just hold it with your fingers when you trim it. All right, it's all cleaned up. Put these aside. I'm going to save those for later for other projects. Oh, we're almost there. So now we're going to put in our standoffs. So hold the screw together from the top side, or hold the screw from the top side, and then just with your fingers, tighten on the hex standoff. You don't need an Allen key or a hex key. Uh, just the, the pressure of your fingers will be enough to let you screw these things on. You don't have to use these, but it's gonna keep it uh, the board up off the surface. All of those metal contacts underneath, if they touch something metal, they could short out but even worse, they can also scratch up any tables that they're on. So this just holds it up a little bit. So, you know, your uh, the people you live with won't get tremendously upset for ruining all of their surfaces. So here's number four. We just have them all screwed in, nice and tight. And there you have it, guys. It's your capacitance learning board. You did it. Uh, you can grab your nine volt battery, plug it in. Watch the explainer video and you'll really see how uh, what's happening here and see just what capacitors do. So thanks for soldering with me today. It's been great. And until next time, keep on learning.